answer for this one is 8. Answer is 33. Answer to this one is negative 1. Good morning. For this problem, you have to move this to the right side and change the operation. Make it plus 1. So that will give you a 25 on the right. And then divide both sides by 5. It comes from here. Cancel those out, and the answer is 5. Move this over to this side, change the operation to minus, and that will give you a 36 on the right. 6 times 6 is 36. So move this over and change the sign, make it plus, so 15 plus 3 is 18, and divide the 18 by negative 2 to get negative 9. Multiple choice, block letter only. If you want to find the x-intercept, then just get rid of the y term and do 3x equals 12 so x would have to be equal 4 which is d so you yep oh, wow. alright here's today's common core objective we'll be doing the labels and scales today only alright example 1 a monthly sell bill is calculated by the following charges. Each customer will pay a flat fee of $40 per month plus 50 cents per minute for each minute over 300 minutes. Create an equation. I forgot to take that out again. It's on all of my slides. Create an equation that represents this billing cycle and graph it using your own scale. So if we're going to come up with something that we can graph, yesterday we figured out that it's got to be in this form. Y equals MX plus B. So each customer has to pay a flat fee of $40. So no matter how many minutes they use, you're going to have to add $40 to the bill. So where would the $40 go in this equation? It would be the B, right. So we've been able to come up with this much so far. No matter what they're doing with minutes, they're going to be paying at least 40 bucks. So whatever you calculate for minutes, you've got to add 40 to the bill. Now we go to the minutes. It's 50 cents per minute for each minute over 300 minutes. So we have uh, M and X. Where should it go? Bartley was first. All right, so all right, so Bartley is saying that we're going to do Y equals 0.50 because it's 50 cents. 0.50 X plus 40. So what is X representing? The number of minutes. X will be the number of minutes. So if I use 400 minutes and I multiply that by 0.50 and then add 40, is that going to give me my bill for the month? Johnson says no. Why is that? Yeah, we have to subtract the 300. Whatever amount of minutes they use over 300 is what we're looking for. So we have to concentrate on this part. So we're going to edit this and come up with a separate equation here. So y equals 0.50 times something that's going to allow us to calculate uh, the number of minutes over 300 that have been used. 
So what if I use 700 minutes? What would I do to 700? Would I multiply 700 by 50 cents? What would I do? Subtract 300 from it. So if I used 1,000 minutes, I'd subtract 300. And if I used 400 minutes, I would subtract 300. If I used 300 minutes, I'd still subtract 300. So the number of minutes used are continually changing, and what do we use to represent something that could be anything? X, X yeah, so I would do X and then what? Minus 300, right. So we'll go back and review what we've done so far. You have to pay $40 no matter what, and it's 50 cents times the number of minutes over 300. To get those minutes over 300, you have to you put in the minutes for X and then subtract 300. Alright, so that's your equation, but we can't graph that yet. What do we have to do to it? Yeah. Right, you have to do 0 0.50 times X and 0 0.50 times 300. So let's do that and distribute the 0 0.50. So you would have 0 0.50 50x and then you would have 0.50 times 300 which is what? 150 so it's minus 300 so we have to put minus 150 now what do we do to the back side here minus 150 plus 400 you do what? Yeah, you could add them together. So what is a negative 150 plus 40? Mickname. Um, negative. Yep, negative 110. So it's y equals 0.50x minus 110. What we did up here is we multiplied 0.50 times x and 0.50 times 300 and came up with 0.50x minus 150. The 150 comes from this times this, and that was already there. So we simplify this to get negative 110. This is something that you can graph now. Our equation is y equals 0.50x minus 100. So when we go to graph this, we have to come up with a scale that is usable. And that's not minus 100, that's minus 110. So there's another good reason to get the black marker out. There we go, minus 110. That's an awful looking one. I can't do that. That's a little better. Okay. So we have a y-intercept of a negative 110. So on my graph here, I have my axes... Uh, that I can't take out, but I'm going to have to put in a new pair of them. So since we were in negative territory for our y-intercept, we're going to have to use a different sheet of graph paper. And it's going to be y equals 0 0.50x minus 110. All right, now the slope is 0.50x uh, minus 100. So that means we'd have to go up a half and then over to the right one and we have a y-intercept that is 110. It turns out to be just 110. So now on my graph here, I want to make sure I can still show some stuff, but not have it to where it's, you know, you only have part of a quadrant on there. So with a negative 110, we're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So if I'm going, if I have 7 hash marks on my graph, and I divide 110 by 7. That means the most I could do is probably 15. 15 each for each hash mark. But that puts me way down at the bottom. And we don't want to do that. So instead of going by 15, we could also go by maybe 20. If I went by 20, I could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and there's 120. What if I went by 30? There's 30, 60, 90, there's 120, which would put 110 in between these two. So I think we might want to try that. 
Of course, everybody's graph could be different, but if you want to do it by 30s like I am, you can do this. So we'll go down there and put negative 30, negative 60, negative 90, negative 120. And that's as far as we need to go for that. For the y-axis above it, whatever you do for the bottom half, you have to do for the top. So this is 30, 60, 90, 120. Now X represents what? The number of minutes you went over. And the, the number of minutes you have to go over to start paying for extra minutes is what? 300. So what would be a good scale to use for the X axis? I've just zoomed my graph strangely. There we go. Now I've hit the right tool. We have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So what could we make those? If you did it by 50s, you'd have 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. You could go out to 350. What if we use 700 minutes? Could we put that in there? No. Here's the cutoff right here, 300. So if we had anything that was above 300, the most it could be is 350 that we could show in our graph. What else could we use to represent each mark? Yeah, we could try 100. So why don't we do that? We'll go 100, 200, 300. <coughs> and remember, you don't have to write all of these. But on an example, I will. So we can take it out to 700. Okay, but now we have to graph this. So don't forget, we have 0.50 for a slope. 0.50. So if it's 0.50, we have to go up a half and take a look at just one of these boxes here. And I used the wrong tool again. There we go. This is the right one. A little bit slanted, but that's okay. Look at this box here. We're going up 0.50. If I went up that far, how far is it? 15. If I went up this far, about how far is that? 10. And if I went up about this far, it would be what? Five. About five. Okay, so if you go up a half, you're looking at something right around here. It's really small. So if we go up a half and then over one, what would this be? Yeah, that would be 50. And what's this? So you're looking at one that's right over there. So that's really tiny. And it's going to be very easy to make this somewhat inaccurate. Is there anything that we can do to this graph to make it look more accurate? We can make the numbers smaller. So let's go through here and see if we can take out some of this. There we go. I took it out. If you have pencil, you can take it out. Can, is there something that we can do with this, or do we have to leave the minutes by 100? Do we have any choice at all on the minutes? No. Okay. So what do you suggest we use for the y-axis now? If we have to go up by a half... You want to go up by ones? Okay, so we'll try ones and see if that works out for us. One, two, there's negative one. And we'll go down here to negative two, negative three, and we'll put a couple more here, three and four. Okay, if we do that, can we graph this now? Where's the y-intercept? the y-intercept. It's at negative 110, yes. So can we graph this using the y-intercept? No. no. So we have to find another way to do this. 
So if it crosses at negative 110, then where can we, what can we do to graph this? Yeah. Uh, we might change the x-axis. It, it could work out. What, how about uh, we find where the uh, thing might cross the x-axis. Is that possible? If we found an x-axis spot and then we used the slope from there, is that possible? So let's use what we've learned with the x-intercept. What do you have to do to find the x-intercept? So to find the x-intercept, we would have to put a 0 in for y and make this 0.5x minus 110. You move this over to the left and make it negative, 0.50x equals negative 110. If I divide negative 110 by negative 0.5, then what do I get? Two hundred and twenty. Okay, so the x-intercept is two hundred and twenty. All right, so we'll go in here to the x-intercept and make it two twenty. 220. Alright, what's this? 250 and this would be approximately what? 225. So we need 220 so it's going to be about right here. So we'll make a dot there on 220. That's where it would cross the x-axis. Okay, so we have that much of it. We've made some progress. Now, now what can we do? Do the negative fifty? Not the negative point fifty. The positive point fifty, because if you have a point on a graph, then the only thing else that you need is another point. And how do we create another point using the slope? Not go left. How do you use the slope? Uh, rise over run. Rise over run. So what's the rise? Point fifty. All right. So point fifty. Now, how far up do I have to go in terms of my grids here from this dot? A half. Okay. There you go. So I've gone up a half, and now what? Say what? Over one. And how far over is that going to be? We've made it to this point right here. We've gone up a half. And we go over just one. It'd be just right there. It's, it's almost hardly any movement can be detected on this. So if you go through with your ruler and simply connect up the dot you just made, it is so close to it that chances are you're going to be right on it. So here is what I'm going to draw, and there it is. All of that trouble for two more dots. What we're going to do now is we're going to zoom in on a graph that we've just made. So you would have to use a separate piece of graph paper, but you have to remember what it is you've just accomplished. What was the x-intercept? It was 220. So we know that the x-intercept was 220, and we went up for the slope, slope of m, was 0 0.50. So if I went up 1, when I went up 0.5 and then over 1, 
we have to remember this information here for when we're going to zoom in for the graph. We'll do that on the next page. Alright, so we're going to start with the uh, x-intercept and we found the x-intercept to be 220. So we're zooming in, we're pretending that we're zooming in on this and we know that we had to do the following. We had to start with 220 and let's just say that our 220 is right here. We'll make that 220. And we also know that we have to go up 0.5 and then to the right 1 for our slope. So if I go up 0.5, what scale can I use on my y-axis to, to show easily and more clearly 0.5? You could use, you want to go up by 1's or what? You could use 0.5 if Let's you want to. Alright, so we'll use 0.5. And we would go up 0.5. And what's the next one? Uh, point 1. one. <laughs> it's not 0 0.10. And then 1.5. Then 2. 2.5. Alright, so if I have to go up 0.5 and then over 1, then what should I make my scale for the x-axis? you could make it one. So we could go 221, 222, 223, 224, and 226 out here. Okay. Kind of now, if you know that this is the x-intercept here, and my slope is up 0.5 and to the right one, then I'm going to go up 0.5 and then to the right one. From there, I can draw a line like this, and hopefully it kind of matches up there. It's not looking good. It's so bad that I think I might put another one in there. Let's try this. That one looks a little better. So we'll go like that and like that. So now when we zoomed in on this graph, let's say uh, that we have 224. 224. If, we've, if we have 224 minutes, what does that correspond to if you find it up here on the graph? Yeah, it corresponds to 2. This is $1.50, this is $2, $2.50. So, if you have 224, if you've used 224 minutes, have you gone over the 300 minute threshold? No, you haven't. So, what's your bill? How much is your bill if you haven't gone over 300 minutes? It's $40, right, because you haven't gone over. So, clearly you're not going to pay $2.50 for your sale bill. If that were the case, I would have left AT&T a long time ago. But uh, $2.50, that when you're down here in this area that we've zoomed in on the graph, this represents, in theory, what your bill would be. But once this makes it up here, once your x-axis makes it up here to the... 300 range, then where should this line match up? Once you get to 300 minutes on your x-axis, where would the line match up for the y-axis? Not 3.5. This is like $2.50, and so we're going over one minute at a time, so you still have like 74 more minutes 74 more blocks to go over, which we don't have on our screen. But if you did go over that far, and you made it right to $300, you've already told me what the bill would be if you had 300 minutes exactly, and what was it? $40. So your y-axis would have made it up to $40 by that point. And that would be the break-even point. So your, the part of your graph that you could really zoom in on would be the part that starts at 300 and goes on from there on out.